like me personally, I think paternity tests should be mandatory at like childbirth, like regardless of if you're married or whatever, like just give it flat out. But if you want, like, I don't see why you can't just like do a paternity test. Like our technology has evolved so far now that you really don't have an excuse to say, oh, is this my child or not? Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. Sublime. Interesting. Um, this is a good follow-up. What is your favorite double standard? <laughs> My favorite double standard has to do with sex. It's the fact that guys can go out and like do whatever they want and it should be accepted by females. But the minute a girl sleeps with two guys, then she's labeled a hoe. Like, I, I think it's hilarious to me that we can praise guys on sexual liberation or just sexual promiscuity and women are demonized for just having multiple like sex partners in their whole life. Why do you think that is? Um, like if you had to look at it holistically, why, why do you think that double standard exists and why is it funny? To me, it's funny because like it's mostly the guys who have this idea of like you're a hoe. But then you look at their movements and it's like if I'm a hoe based off of the standards that you're putting on me, why are you not considered a hoe? Like that's why I laugh at it. But I think it's more on the idea of like women are supposed to be pure, like you're supposed to be this idea of like Mary, if that makes sense. Like this idea of like Mary was a, a virgin and you're this pure idol. So if you escape or like if you stray from that, then all of a sudden like you're wrong. But like guys, they don't have that like judgment on them. I don't know necessarily why. And I've heard a lot of guys, not going to drop any names here, who like to say that like it's a biological thing. Like, oh, we can do this because it's in, in us like biologically to want to have multiple partners. But I'm like, you don't think we want to have multiple partners? Like that's why we sleep with more than just one person our whole life. Like if it was not innate to us too, we would literally just wait for that one person. Hmm. Well, I mean, I think uh, the the reason the biological argument exists is because I think there's a lot of evidence that suggests that women are predisposed to want one guy. And when I say women, I, I don't just mean um, uh, humans. I mean, females in general, like in any animal species, uh, species, they congregate around one guy, the apex predator, the alpha male, or whatever the case may be. So in, in women's fantasies, they're looking for one person to be their everything. See, Best case scenario. I Is that true or not? I, I don't like that idea of comparing like humans to animals because there's an array of different animals. And if you look at, for example, the ant kingdom, there's one queen and a lot of men who are trying to have babies with her. So it's like, why are we choosing what animals we compare ourselves to when it validates our points? Because not all animal species operate on that basis. So if I am a woman, I want to really make my point across, I could be like, well, I'm the queen, um, queen bee or the queen ants or whatever, and I should be able to have a plethora of men that swarm towards me. But I think when they make the argument, they make it with animals that we are closely linked to from a genetic standpoint. Mm -hmm. And like ants and butterflies and shit, we're not really linked to. So I, I think when men make that argument, they're saying that in women's perfect world, they're looking for Superman. In men's perfect world, they're looking for a bunch of women. Like a man's fantasy is to be so successful that he gets a bunch of women. A woman's fantasy tends to be, and this is where like you can respond, tends to be that she becomes so desirable that she catches the eye of the king, the king, or the prince. So is that is that true or is that wrong? I mean, yeah, we all want hypergamy. I think that's the term, right? We all want to have the most successful partner. Um, 
but I don't think it's necessarily like one person. I don't think we're looking at it as far as like he is or the king that is in his village is the only successful king that I want to go to. I think with that scenario, it's just proximity. Like, I know that this is a successful king. If I leave this village, I don't know if I'm going to find another successful king. So with that, it's like, yeah, I want to have a successful man. I want him to take care of me. And like... And I think that's the reason. Because women are looking to be taken care of. Men aren't. Uh, so you're, you're looking for the, the male who is most equipped. And this is go, goes back to the animal kingdom argument. The most equipped to take care of you and your offspring. Mm-hmm. Multiple men can't do that. Because men are selfish with offspring. They're not going to take care of other, other people's kids. I know. You don't have to take care of the other man's kids. You it sounds good in theory. It like, sounds good in theory. But yeah. like part of, like you hear women all the time say that it's a package deal. But having multiple wives sounds good in theory until you have to deal with all their emotions. So I think theoretically, like, it all sounds good. But in reality, being able to confide in one person, and open up to one person on both sides and, like, just have to deal with that person is more ideal than having to spread yourself thin with multiple partners on either side. I agree. I, I, I guess the pushback was just that... Um, the reason why that double standard exists is because it comes, it's informed by those things, the biology, the societal influences. So to see a woman go in the masculine direction is off-putting. But also, um, I think part of the issue too that we're not touching on, but you could respond to is paternity fraud. Yeah. There's never gonna be a time in your life that you're unsure if your child is yours. That's never going to happen to you. Now, a promiscuous woman threatens a man's safety in that way. Because I, I, if I go out and I sleep with whoever and come back with a child, you know it's not yours. You don't have any responsibility to the child. But you have cases with men raising children for 18, 20 years and later finding out it wasn't theirs. And I would, I would want to like take that idea into like deeper consideration if paternity tests were not like true like me personally I think paternity tests should be mandatory at like childbirth like regardless of if you're married or whatever like just give it flat out but if you want like I don't see why you can't just like do a paternity test like our technology has evolved so far now that you really don't have an excuse to say oh is this my child or not and, and that, that's some of the pushback because, because the way that the laws are structured right now, uh, not pushback, I'm sorry, that's some of what men are complaining about because the way the laws are structured right now, number one, first of all, the way society is structured, asking a woman for a paternity test is similar to asking a woman for a prenup. It's insulting. It's like, how dare you? You're, you're coming in, in this with the wrong intentions. You think it's going to fail. How dare you suspect me of that, this and that. And then the second piece is the way the family court system is set up, men are getting screwed. Like some men are paying child support for kids, for women that they didn't even have sex with. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know, I know insane. those cases. <laughs> so I, I guess, obviously, we know what all the female purity stuff is informed by. But I think in the modern context, that is part of the issue because the consequences are much higher. If the woman is unfaithful than if the man is unfaithful. And I guess the argument is a woman who is promiscuous in a masculine way is a threat to maybe do something like that. Thoughts? I mean, I can see that point of view. I definitely can. And I mean, it's a fair argument for sure. Um, I was just having a conversation with some of my guy friends on the, t- the topic in general is about abortion, and but it kind of stemmed into like males, um, the male, what's it called, their authority or like how much power they really have when it comes to paternity of like the child. Like it really is left onto the woman's hands. But then my argument was like, if you know at the conception of a child, it's left into her hands, then it's in your hands to prevent whatever it's to come. So, like, you should be hypersensitive to making sure that you're not just out here being reckless to get whoever and whatever pregnant. 
be use condoms. Unfor like this is an uncommon like idea, but get a vasectomy. It's reversible. I, I agree with you 100%. I think what makes that argument not hold water at some point is because it doesn't work both ways. Because you also have situations where the guy does want a child. True. But the woman doesn't. So it's like if the guy, if somebody did a quote or whatever, and was like, the government is wanting to force men to be fathers, but not forcing women to be mothers. And that's part, that's, that's a whole nother tangent about abortion and things like that. But at the end of the day, if the man wanted the child, if the woman says no, it's no. If the man doesn't want the child, the woman says yes, it's yes. And the argument is that part of what we're doing is taking away men's right to choose by providing it to women, to choose just outright. And I agree. I do think it is unfair, but I think the whole childbirth system and the whole childbirth process is unfair in general. It's not weighted on demand. Like your, your part is to put your semen in her and let it meet the egg. After that, you really don't have, you're shaking your head, no. No, I'm not. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, after that, you really don't have any more control of it. You're not affected by anything over the, after that. So like she has to go through the childbirth itself which comes with complications. She has to go through like the nine months of pregnancy, which comes with complications. And I don't think some guys really consider that aspect. Like it's not just about the child. It's sometimes like a lot of times it's about her and like her burdens that she has to bear with this child. So I've, I've not, I've not had a kid, but I have a lot of people around me now who are giving birth because I'm at that age. And I'm hearing their stories of not just like pregnancy, but child delivery and like afterwards and it's so scary like now i'm realizing how scary childbirth and like that whole process is i'm hearing people say that they lost their hair some people said that they have like temporary blindness and i'm just like this happens just for having an egg meet a sperm like you don't think about that so i don't think the onus is on the man like after the semen so like unfortunately like it's not it's not weighted equally regardless it, and it can't be seen as equal you don't have the same consequences. Yeah, and, and, and I think that is part of some people's arguments that men should be able to opt out of fatherhood. Because if women can opt out of motherhood, why can't men opt out? So instead of it just being men be careful who you put your nut in, it's also women be careful of who you nut, let nut in you. I agree. So I you agree, agree that... that Men should be able to say, I don't want to be a father and go on about his life. Um, I know I'm going to get kicked back on this, but I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I don't think. So we should well, let, let me let me let me elaborate on that. I don't think he should just be able to say, I, I nutted in you. I can just do whatever. I don't want anything to do with this child. I think if you don't want anything to do with the child emotionally, like the least you can do because you did create this child is a financial like obligation. So unfortunately, like it took two to make a kid. And now she has, she has agreed that she's willing to take the burden of delivering the child, going through postpartum, going through whatever comes with childbirth and child rearing. So I, I feel like, but but again, that, that's and that's the point, because we're saying we are willing to force men to be fathers, mm -hmm. but we're not going to force women to do anything. So maybe that way makes women a little bit more considerate or thoughtful with who they let or have sex with or let none in them. If, if we have a system that says if he opts out of fatherhood, you're on your own. I feel like we already kind of have that. No, he has to pay. So again, it's like but the, the, what, what you're saying is valid about the postpartum and everything that comes with motherhood, right? And a woman should get to choose if she wants to bear that burden or not. But on the financial part, which is our burden to bear, we don't get to choose. Why is that? And our choice, our choice is dependent on your choice. But you had a choice too. 
in the beginning. But you could say that about the woman who let the deadbeat nut in her. Yeah. She also had a choice. But again, we're not penalizing her for her bad choice, but we're penalizing the men for their bad choice in a similar situation. Yeah. I'm, and, and the only reason I think that, that argument is valid is because we, I don't know if you would say white supremacy, society, whatever, has created this narrative that women, especially our black women, are benevolent and just pure beings that only do bad because they were put in bad situations. I don't and think And because that's of that, a lot of women skirt accountability. I so in this universe, it's also on you to be careful who you have sex with. I don't think that's the case. I think, and we kind of had a conversation about this, about when a guy has sex with a woman, she's pregnant for nine months. When a guy or when a girl has sex with a, a man and they have a child, he can still get another girl pregnant. So I think that it's a legal prevention of that. Like if you have that financial burden of taking care of this child, you're not just out here putting your seed in everybody in anything. Because you have to kind of think twice, like, do I want to really have to pay for a thousand children? But again, that's only putting the onus on the guy. If you know that you're not going to get any help, you're going to be more careful about who puts their seat in you. Because just like you said, it takes two. But then where's the accountability on the guy? Well, the accountability on the guy is, right, if he nuts in a girl, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? He has to potentially weigh if he's going to be a father or not. The accountability on a woman is if she gets nutted in by a guy, she has to weigh, is she going to raise a child by herself or not? So now the guys who want to be fathers are more careful about who they pick. They're not going to pick the girl who wants to abort the kid, right? The women who want to be mothers are going to be careful about the guys they pick. The men who don't want to be fathers are going to be careful about the, they're going to pick the women who don't want to be mothers because they're on the same page and vice versa. So again, I'm all about you know, water finding its level. Because this, it becomes problematic when person A wants to be a father, person B doesn't want to be a mother. We don't talk about that as much because most of the time it's person A wants to be a mother, person B doesn't want to be a father. You see what I'm saying? So I want a, I want a situation that holds both sides accountable because this current system allows women to be absolved of all their sins because they bear a child for nine months. Some women are terrible mothers. They still did the same nine months. Yeah, I agree. 